Hello there everyone, I'm Soph and I sweat a lot. <laughs> At job interviews, after I just posted a video, nearly always when I'm on the phone. Not gonna lie, it's a bit excessive, especially as a youth, both my nerves and my sweat were especially powerful, meaning all the kooky t-shirts that I used to wear with pure pride have sweat stains marking the pits forever. And with great sweat comes great body odour, aka BO, aka science BO, axillary osmidrosis, with axillary meaning your armpit region and osmidrosis meaning your sweat has a strong odour. The existence of BO or AO, I guess, when the science acronym AO. <laughs> The existence of BO meant that I was surprised to find out that your sweat doesn't actually smell, at least when it's fresh. It's the bacterial breakdown of this sweat that actually leads to body odour, and that can also explain why your nervous sweat smells more than your exercise sweat. You see, you have two main types of sweat gland. They're your eccrine and your apocrine. Science glands, eccrine and apocrine. There's actually also a third, your sebaceous, but we don't need to talk about that right now. The eccrine glands release your I'm too hot, I need to cool down sweat, and your apocrine glands release your nervous, they're too hot, I need to calm down sweat. I'm right on cue, I'm overheating in this jumper, so I'm gonna change. Whilst your eccrine glands cover pretty much your whole body, your apocrine glands are concentrated in areas where there's lots of hair follicles, meaning there are certain areas that release more nervous sweat, namely your pits and your bits. The nervous sweat that comes from these glands is different to your exercise sweat because it has way more proteins and fats in it, and these are what your bacteria break down into smelly substances. Your exercise sweat, on the other hand, is about 90% water, so there's a lot less stuff for the bacteria to work on. Some of the key bacterial players in this smell production include Staphylococcus hominis, Staphylococcus hemolyticus, and Cornibacterium tubercularstericum. And this easy to pronounce trio are particularly efficient at breaking certain sweat chemicals down into their smellier components. And one example of this chemical breakdown is when dipeptide con conjugated theoalcohols are turned into free theoalcohols. That happens to chemicals such as S12-hydroxymethyl-1-methylbutyl-L-cysteinoglycine, aka cisglia-3-methrish. Don't worry about trying to understand what that all means exactly, I certainly didn't. It isn't worth learning the foreign language that is chemistry, just for the sake of a video about sweat. Je pense que c'est mieux de passer du temps à apprendre le français. All this means then is that the amount your BO smells varies from person to person, depending on the bacterial species that live on you and the substances you release in your sweat. In fact, there's a version of a particular gene that contributes to how likely it is you'll even have BO at all. It's called the ABCC11 gene, as in ABCC, easy as one. One. <laughs> Such a stupid joke. If you've seen me talk about genes before, then you'll know that a gene is made up of these things called bases. There are four base options and they form massive chains that make up your DNA, with the order of those bases determining which genes you'll have. Basically, there are two versions of this ABCC11 gene which only differ by one base, and FYI, that is absolutely tiny. One version of this gene is the dominant and therefore far more common version. People with this gene have smelly nervous sweat and also wet brownie orange sticky earwax. Now if you're sitting there like, wait a minute, my earwax is dry and flaky and I don't actually know what this BO smell is that you keep speaking about, then you might have the rarer version of the ABCC11 gene, which is actually pretty common in people of East Asian descent. In fact, here's one YouTube commenter who didn't even know BO was a thing until they lived with a roommate who had the more common version of the ABCC11 gene. Now it's really unusual for a one base substitution in DNA to lead to such obvious physical differences. So let me explain what's happening here. Again, as I've spoken about in detail in other videos, the base order of your DNA codes for these things called amino acids. These amino acids are the building blocks of substances called proteins, and proteins are basically what make your body tick. So in this case, the ABCC11 gene codes for a protein called ATP binding cassette transporter subfamily C member 11. It's it's ATP, binding cassette transporter sub, family C, member 11. The one base switch I mentioned earlier changes one of the amino acid building blocks in this protein. And if you want to practice your chemistries, then it's a glycine that gets switched to an arginine. 
The rarer version of the protein is the one with the arginine in. This protein is recognised by your body as not being quite right, and so it gets destroyed pretty sharpish. This leads to a reduction in the amount of the ABCC11 protein in your body, which leads to more mild body odour when you sweat, because this thing isn't being broken down by bacteria because it's not there and also it leads to dry flaky earwax. But if you, like me, have the glycine ABCC11 protein coded for by the ample BO causes crises 11 times a week gene, <laughs> obviously just kidding, then you aren't so lucky. But don't worry, you can always resort to deodorants, which make the surface of your skin unpleasant for bacteria to live on, or antiperspirants, which form little plugs that block your pores and stop your sweat coming out. And wash on the reg, of course. So there we go, a quickie from me, because behind the scenes I've been working on a video all about Pokemon. So let's pop this on. If I get my organisational self in gear and release this video on time, then a few days after this is released on July the 17th, a video where I talk about the intro to Pokemon Season 1 Indigo League is going to go up on Nebula. As I've mentioned before, Nebula is a streaming service where you can access all of my videos ad-free. They also have loads of other creators, not just me, obviously, and also have original shows. And this show is going to be one of those, created for their series, Working Titles. The best deal to get Nebula is actually if you sign up through Curiosity Stream. That way you get your first month of both free and you get free access to Nebula the whole time you're a member of Curiosity Stream. On Curiosity Stream you get access to thousands of documentaries for only $2.99 a month or a newly discounted price of $14.79 a year. So if you want to sign up to that, you can go to curiositystream.com slash sofsnotes, then you'll get a welcome email from Nebula, then you can sign up, and then if you want, from the 17th of July, you can watch me intensely mouth the lyrics to the Pokemon theme song. And that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this brief little foray into the world of nervous sweat, dipping our toe in there. And if you did, like this video if you like it, share it if you share it, subscribe if you subscribe it, tweet me if you want to tweet me, comment if you have any thoughts about sweat, I'm sure we all do. And otherwise, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and remember, fresh sweat doesn't smell, what? And a huge thank you to my patrons with a shout out to Adam Dullinger, Terry Cox and Justin Brown. If you want access to extra outtakes, scripts and doodles, then wander over there and see what's up. I feel like I have weirdly hyper energy for this video, I'm not sure why. Science BO, axillary oximidomis- oh, air follicle. Follicles, follicules, your follicle. They include Staphylo. Oh, I'm just not ready because Staphylococcus. I just don't want to say cock this much, really, in a video. <laughs> oh, little birds. Stop flying. I'm so zen. Never been more zen in my life. I will get there. <laughs> Here's a link to some of my favourites, here's a cheeky little link to my Patreon, and here's a link to a video that I put out here specially because it's been so well behaved. Bye!